many years we've had this debate about multidimensional poverty measurement. For a few years now, we have a, a bunch of concrete proposals out there, um, one being the multidimensional poverty index of actually implementing a uh, potentially internationally comparable uh, way to measure poverty. And um, but many open questions remain. You know, how does this relate to um, uh, income poverty dynamics? How do uh, how can we measure uh, MPI dynamics over time? How uh, can we really find comparable indicators across countries? And so, you know, this workshop was particularly looking at this linkage between MPI dynamics and uh, income poverty dynamics, and I think that's just very important uh, to study. Because to some degree, this multidimensional poverty index is still rather untested. It's new, and we need to learn more about it and see how it uh, works in practice. Uh, and um, so this is an important uh, milestone in uh, in doing precisely that kind of analysis. Apart from the fact that you know there's a great deal of heterogeneity uh, in uh, how um, multidimensional poverty and uh, relates to income poverty, and that often has to do with policy, with country conditions. But some of the things are still not so well understood, maybe having to do with indicators and weights. Um, I think some of the common themes that are uh, coming out is first, in a static way, there is a big mismatch between uh, those who are identified as uh, multidimensionally poor and those who are identified as income poor. That um, the surprise to me is that there is, in many studies, we find nearly as much or sometimes even more dynamics in MPI poverty. I would expect it's much lower dynamics there. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, one needs to understand a little bit more why that is, and in particular what uh, uh, role policy has played in this. Um, the other... Um, thing that's kind of interesting is that um, the intensity of MPI poverty seems to be rather static. That doesn't change very much, but it's the headcount, just the number of people who are affected seems to be going down uh, um, substantially. And more generally, the good news is most of the case studies were about falling poverty uh, in many countries, and so that's kind of interesting uh, and uh, pleasing to see. We are not quite there yet to uh, spell out the policy implications clearly. At the moment, it's just uh, a, a descriptive uh, approach. It's a measurement of uh, uh, which is important because policymakers do care quite a great deal about uh, how do how are people doing, not only in income terms but in in a broader conception of well-being. So just doing the measurement right is important, and I think it's yielding interesting results that policymakers care about. The next obvious step is to really think about um, linking these dynamics to policy changes and, and seeing what kind of countries are the, uh, the countries that uh, have had this higher MPI dynamics relative to income dynamics. What are the countries where the reverse has happened, where income growth uh, was faster and po income poverty fell faster and MPI poverty didn't change so much. That will then uh, be uh, the stage where we're at uh, to uh, draw some clear policy conclusions. And um, I think we are nearly there. So I think um, a lot of the papers are kind of moving in that direction already. One big surprise has been um, that the uh, astonishingly high amount of dynamics in MPI poverty, and also to the extent that where we had panel data, even the high fluctuation. So uh, one would have thought once you're MPI poor, you are never, uh, it's going to be hard to get out. And particularly the other way around, if you are MPI non-poor, it's virtually impossible to get in. That doesn't seem to be the case. It seems to be that um, a substantial share of people who were non-poor in MPI terms are falling back into poverty. And one really needs to study that uh, because I think uh, that's uh, very interesting. And of course, the converse that they are getting out is also very interesting. Uh, some of the things off, uh, can relate to people moving, for example. You, you move from um, uh, a rural area which just got uh, access to services and to an urban uh, informal settlement where you don't have the access to these services, you know, you, and therefore you're suddenly you're falling down in MPI poverty. Um, you know, health conditions may deteriorate. Um, there may be... Um, uh, so that may be an issue. Um, and then there may also be a kind of generational issues. Um, so there is um, um, 
a new generation of people is heading the household um, and um, they bring um, either better or worse uh, MPI characteristics with them. And uh, so that, those are the kind of things that uh, could be happening. What this workshop has, um, in, in the sense in which this workshop has moved the agenda forward is that um, I, I think that we now understand much better the linkage between uh, MPI poverty dynamics or, or multidimensional poverty dynamics and income poverty dynamics and uh, that it appears that uh, multidimensional poverty indicators can be used um, for tracking of poverty in um, better than was uh, maybe anticipated or maybe uh, uh, people would uh, presume uh, and so that in a sense there is a lot more policy messages in there when one is doing um, uh, this tracking of multidimensional poverty um, and uh, and in some sort of sense it may actually be um, better than tracking income poverty because it may uh, be more looking at long-term well-being than um, than at a kind of current the current situation.